Hey guys, James here. Today in this video, we're gonna be replacing this door here with an automatic glass cavity sliding door by the guys of Premium Sliding Doors. So what you're gonna see in the video is all the tools, all the tips and everything you need to do a job like this. Now, first thing we're gonna do is get all this covered up and protected, and then we can start pulling this wall apart to see what's behind there, and then I can start installing the unit itself. All right, so here's our unit as delivered. Basically, we've got the box here with all our sensors and motion sensors, because as I described, this is gonna be automatic. We've got the head unit, which is quite chunky. This is all controlled basically at the end here. You've got your systems which the electrician will have to have a look at, 12 volt switches and and power. So I'll get this out of the way. I'll open it up and we'll take a closer look at the glass door. Well packaged and covered, which is good. That's gonna look really, really nice installed. And with this one, there's a bit of electrical work in it. So you need the Sparky to actually hook this up. So we've got Joel here, he's gonna have a bit of a look and see what's needed and hook up all the power and get this thing working. So the next stage now, because we're about to put the cavity sliding unit in, we've got some of these tiles that we need to replace where the old wall is. So we'll bust those out first, get them relayed, and that way this cavity unit can sit on top, and we have that sliding over and get everything else finished off. All right, demo's done. Now it's time for the tiling. That's the thing with these little jobs. Sometimes you've got to be the, the tiler, the plasterer, sometimes even the painter. Jack of all trades. Okay, so the demolition's done, our tiling's complete. The next thing now is to close this all off, framing it, so framing our studs on both sides. I've already done this side here, which is boxed in. I'm about to finish this other side, but before I put this last stud in, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the electrics and how this all works. The electrician's come in yesterday and he's put the 12 volt wire down for where our control panel's gonna go. And he's also put the power point up in the roof where this plugs into. Okay, so this little unit here is the, the beam sensor controller. And what this does, it has the little plugs on both ends. So all you really need to do with installation is have this up in the roof somewhere or somewhere you can get access to it but via a manhole. And then this will go up inside our wall frame. The wires will come down to the little sensor pad here on the wall that you wave to get in. And the same on the other one, other side, we're gonna install one here as well. This connector goes to that pad, which will run at the end of this little wire here. They basically just plug in together like that. It's gonna run through the wall. So I'm doing this now before we cover it up so I can get that stud work in. And then the electrician won't have to worry about fish, fishing that down through the wall uh, later. So now I can just stick this up in the roof space. And now that that's in there, that's a lot easier to do while that's open rather than covering it up and the electrician trying to have to drill holes through the top plate and try and fish all that through later. But before we do that, I'll show you what's in the box. So these are our little control sensors. That's what you wave your hand over. That's what we're wiring up for. That'll open the door. We've got two of those. We've also got the beam sensors. These are the ones that'll go into the frame. And then you've got the wiring that'll go down to those sensors as well. You'll see the electronics in there. This little um, tail connector will go in and connect in here. And then this end will connect onto our 12 volt wiring that we just ran up into the roof. All right, now like with the standard cavity door install, because I know my unit's sitting on this side here, I want to measure out from my studs basically where the edge of the carcass is going to come to, and then I want to pack that bottom rail so that when I sit this on, that's already sitting perfectly level. So working back, I'm just going to make sure that I've got a nice level base and just slide my packers through where it's going to be nice and solid. Now the thing with this, this is where the electrical all comes out the back of this track. So there's a little slot in the back and you just gotta make sure that as you assemble this, you slide that wiring down into the slot. So in the pack of your cavity kit, you'll get your box of rollers, roller hanger, all the bits and pieces that you need to, for the door. Part of that is some of the screws. Now I'm using the countersunk screws to go into the top here and this will secure the frame together. You'll see it's all pre-drilled. All you need to do is line it up and put it into the extrusion. That just pulls everything tight in here. Now I'll do the other side. Like on all these cavity sliding door frames, while it's down, it's a good opportunity to take the time to drill out into the back of the aluminium and down to the bottom of the aluminium where your fixing points are gonna be. So for this one, I know where my solid blocks are, so I'll put some holes in the back here, and I'll also put a couple at the bottom so I can drill down into the concrete and secure it. So it's eventually gonna sit on those two packers at the base, but we're gonna have to sort of bring it in and stand it up and try and get under that, like in between here and the smoke detector, if we can. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky. 
All right, so cavities in. I've left the jam out on this one. Normally you'd build it with the jam in place and put it all up together. But because we're tight on space, I've left that out. But I've left enough packing. I've left 10 mil on both sides. Always leave 10 mil inside of the jam so you can pack it in and out. Now it's a matter of sliding some packers in behind here to get this tight against the jam. And once that's tight, work my way down to make sure this is nice and straight. Now I'm getting set up for this other little frame here to divide off the cavity slider in this main room. So I'm just gonna mark it all out. Cut all my framing. Okay, now that the jam's in, the last part of the electrical are these beam sensors. Because it's an automatic closing door, you need to have these on each side of the jam. So if the beam gets broken, the door will stop. So in the kit, you get two blue and two black. Generally, you'll install one into the jam about 100 mil up from the bottom and one about 500 up. So we've run these in behind that jam there. We're just going to drill a hole through to put these little sensors on that side. And then on the opposite side, it's the black. So you have one blue, one black to get the opposite, to get the laser to work. Now lastly, all I need to do now is just drill a hole up through the top of the cavity up there or above the top plate and push the rest of the wiring into the roof so the electrician can then connect everything up. All right, now that our cavity's in, the last part of it is the installation of the glass door. We've got these heavy duty brackets that attach to the top of the glass. I'll screw those on now, carry it upstairs, put it into place and then we'll adjust it. Okay, now a couple of quick little tips before bringing the glass up. You wanna pack the bottom to where you think the door is gonna be sitting. Same as if it was a timber door, but obviously being glass and being quite heavy, you wanna get this pretty close. The other thing you wanna do, which I'll show you up here now, is adjust these track rollers pretty close to where the brackets are on the glass so that when you lift it up and in place, you can make the adjustments pretty close to where you want it without having to maneuver around too much waiting for the glass. And then lastly, you just wanna adjust this bracket so it lines up with the glass. I'm just gonna loosen these two bolts, slide it across to where it needs to be to line up with the bracket on the glass, and then we're good to go. All right, so that's on and operational. You can see now the door opens. I think it's got about a, what, a three second lag time and then it closes again. It initially had its little programming where you set the door halfway, goes back, learns the stop, goes forward, learns the close, and then it's automatically set up. Now with these little beam sensors, you just give it, wave your hand over that. You see the door automatically opens up. All we need to do now is finish packing this jam. That was probably the biggest thing that I struggled with getting that in. I probably should have left that off first, but now that I know next time, leave that jam out, fit the door, then put the jam on and pack it, finish it off. But very happy with how that's gone. Now we'll do some arcs, get it all painted up, job done.